Hello, everybody, and welcome to Philosophy 2000 OLB Philosophy and Film. I am going to be your instructor this term. My name is Carl Laddert. I'm Dr. Carl Laddert, if that matters to you. Um, you can just call me Carl. Don't worry about it. So today, we're just going to go through the nuts and bolts of the course, what to expect, what, what's it going to be uh, in terms of the delivery, the organization, and so on. I'm going to show you the course website, a few key documents, uh, tell you what we're going to do for the rest of the week. The rest of this week is going to be largely introductory material as well, getting you a sense of what we're doing, what philosophy is about, if you haven't done any of it before, um, really getting you oriented. And then next week, uh, the second full week of the course, we're really going to get into our material, which is really exploring philosophical topics through both the medium of film and writing. So with that, let's just jump ahead and take a look at the course website to start with, where you can find the documents that we are then going to take a look at. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in those important documents. And then there's going to be another video explanation this week, going into a bit more detail about some of the various assignments. Okay. Um, sorry for any awkward pauses such as that one. Sometimes I have to click buttons on Zoom and so on to switch the screen and, and this sort of thing. I'm not technologically incompetent. I'm, I'm relatively uh, adaptive, though sometimes there's still a little bit of a, a hiccup just in figuring out how to make all this stuff work. So here is our course website. Um, this is on Moodle. You're going to need access to this website regularly every every week. This is where readings are hosted. Um, the um, assignments are, are posted here, important course documents, so on. So the very first tab here, introduction to the course, start here. I hope it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this is Monday, July 6th, so I'm, I'm starting to add content here. In fact, once you're looking at this video, there should be a link to this video in this section. But of course, short of inventing a time machine, I can't have the link to the video in the section before the video is done. Well, I could have the link, but it would be broken and that could be confusing, so I'm not doing it. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit more content there. There's a link to my virtual office hours. So on Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to 12 in the morning, I want to have virtual office hours via Zoom. Uh, you can just drop by and talk to me then. You can also talk to me at other times during the week. Just uh, email me ahead of time and, and set up an appointment. So I have a fairly flexible schedule during the work week uh, between, let's say, roughly nine to five. Uh, it, it all does depend on the day. So email me, set up a time, or you can just email me some quick questions and things like that as well. Though if it's something a little bit more complicated, if you've got quite a bit you want to talk about, often chatting is better. It's, it's just more efficient. It's quicker. Now, under that, we've got the important course documents section. This is where you'll find the syllabus, the schedule. That's what we're going to take a look at today instructions for um, really the various things you have to do in the course. And as you see there, there's really three things overall. There's an argument assignment, that's a short assignment on the introductory material we're gonna be looking at later this week. Uh, there are gonna be forum activities, weekly forum activities. There are also gonna be some essays in this course, some, some writing assignments. So like I said, we'll, I wanna talk just a little bit more about that when we take a look at the syllabus uh, and how those are weighted and so on. And then I'm going to have another video later this week to go into detail about really what, what you need to do, talking about due dates and how to complete these activities, uh, looking at the instructions a little bit, thinking about uh, how to do well in this course, uh, assuming you want to do well in this course. So those important course documents, those will be there all term. Um, and then under that, there's introductory materials. This is something else we're going to be looking at this week. So this is really just some content on what philosophy is and how it operates. And really philosophy is uh, primarily concerned with a kind of rational discourse, which we call arguments. So there's a, an introduction to philosophy here, what is philosophy, uh, an introduction to philosophical argumentation, a very brief one. And then of course, uh, a piece on the use of language. That's an important piece, particularly when we're thinking about how to do well on assignments such as essays. Then after that, I'm not going to go through them all in detail, but um, below the introductory materials here, you can see a number of different tabs, and these are really our topics for the course. So there is a schedule uh, that tells you which day I'm going to be going through the various pieces of material. It also has all the due dates on there, so that the 
course schedule is really your one-stop shopping for when are things due, uh, what do I need to be doing on any given day or, or you know, to be caught up in. Uh, and so there are through four to 10 here, these are our topics. So um, I, you know what, I'm not even gonna talk about them quite yet. I wanna wait for uh, looking at the course schedule to take a look, but you can see them right here. And if you click on these, um, you can see in addition to the course schedule, which has all the days, um, right in the, the various units, there are little tabs that tell you what films are covered in those topics, as well as either the readings in PDF form. So for instance, here I've got a PDF of uh, Descartes' first two meditations, which is something we're gonna be looking at in connection to this first topic. And then there are links to the other couple of readings here. Uh, those go through our library website, so you need to make sure you've got access, your, your library privileges are in good order. Um, and then that's how you're gonna access the readings in the course. So you can unfold those, those tabs and take a look at all the reading and all the films and everything. Uh, and we're gonna see that all in the schedule soon. Now, in addition to everything that we've got here, um, like I mentioned, there's going to be forums in the course and I'm going to be sticking those forums in here. Uh, so there will be sort of one extra set of links showing up on those various topics, um, which are, are going to be scattered through the course done on a weekly basis. Okay. So that's the course website that should be, I'm going to be sending you another email today. I sent you an email last week, really directing you to our course website here. This is really where you need to go to uh, get everything for the course, uh, just about. This is really our, our central hub. This is our information repository. One other website you're gonna to have to go to in addition to this website in the library uh, is Turnitin. That's where I'm gonna ask you to submit your essays, your written work. Uh, so you're gonna to have to be able to go to these, those three places. Uh, and so let's take a look at the syllabus now. Now that I've already given you a bit of a, a tease about what's going to be going on in the course. So here's the syllabus. I'm gonna walk through a bit of it and really point out some highlights. Read this whole thing. I don't care if it's bedtime reading, if it's over morning coffee, read the syllabus, read the schedule, read the instructions. If I give you something, Read it, assume it's important. I don't particularly like busy work. So if I'm giving you information, whether it's in instructions or some of the introductory material, I'm giving it to you for a purpose. If I'm asking you to do something in the course, such as the argument assignment or the forums, I'm asking you to do it for a purpose, right? Uh, back when I was a little bit younger and had slightly more hair, uh, I can remember very much not enjoying what to me seemed an awful lot like busy work in things like high school and, and public school and so on. Uh, and it, in part that great aversion to busy work is part of what drew me to the university environment where I, I s did not see very much of that thing or at least I saw an awful lot less of it. Okay, so we've got some basic information here. So you know, there's my name, there's my email address. If you wanna get a hold of me outside of office hours, that's the best way to do it. There is a phone number I've listed here. Now that phone number is my phone on campus. Uh, I'm not there, I'm working from home. You get to see uh, bits of my office. I, I might even record something out in the garden at some point. Uh, I'm not gonna promise that because there are a lot of birds and things and I don't want that to be interrupting the quality. So you can call that phone number, but if you do that, nobody's gonna answer unless somebody's somehow broken into my office. Uh, but you could leave me a voicemail there but the voicemail will then get emailed to my University of Lethbridge email account. So I suggest you kind of cut out the, the sort of extra step and just send me the email. But if for some reason you really need to get me a message and cannot send an email but can make a phone call, you can call that number and I'll, I'll get that uh, voicemail when I check my email. So we've already talked about office hours, Mondays, Wednesdays, 11 to 12, or by appointment. I'm happy to talk to you outside of that 11 to 12 uh, window if that, that window doesn't work for you. Um, if you can talk during that time, if, if you wanna talk during that time is great because I've already set that time away to sit and, and talk to people, but we can make an appointment to talk at some other point. And please don't feel um, afraid or, or be hesitant or anything to reach out, send me an email, come talk to me, even if you just wanna come say hi and um, ask a few questions, even if they're only tangentially related to the course, uh, even if they're not related to the course, if you wanna ask me something about, I don't know, uh, academic world, philosophy more generally, 
you want to chat about some other topics and films and things like that. Uh, one thing I will say is in, in pulling this course together, I probably had enough material to do a whole second version of this course. Uh, and just, you know, I, I ultimately pared it down to the, the set of topics I've chosen here, uh, but there are all sorts of other interesting topics. Uh, I mentioned already with talking about the course website, inventing a time machine to go back in. Uh, time travel would have been a great topic. That was one that was, that was on my radar. Time, the nature of time, I mean, teleportation. Uh, there are so many good topics uh, that I, I hope the selection we have in this course is to your liking. So there's a course description here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read it just because, I, now you can read, but uh, this does really give you in a nutshell what the course is about. This course is an exploration of philosophical topics through the medium of film. We'll utilize films as entry points to various philosophical, philosophical issues and explore these issues in depth via written philosophical texts. Topics to be covered in the course will include, and so here really gives you a list of, of what is it we're gonna be looking at through the course, right? What are our topics? What, what things are we gonna be interested in? First, if reality is as it appears to us, if something has to be valuable to be real, or has to be real to be valuable, I'm sorry, I'm getting that backwards. The ethics of torturing terrorist suspects, the global distribution of wealth, genetic enhancement in humans, if machines can think, and what it means to be the same person through time. So that in a nutshell is really what we're gonna be doing over the next six weeks. Thinking about those topics, thinking about how they are presented to us in films. So taking films as a piece of course material and as a kind of entry point to a topic, and then getting into some more depth on that topic through some philosophical readings. Now, we're still going to treat the films as source material, it is course material, and really, uh, and I'm gonna talk more about this later, but a great way to think about the films it, is that they are presenting one possible version or one possible scenario or situation where those topics are present. It's one possibility, right? Here's one concrete situation. Here's one person or set of events or, or set of people. Here's what happens, right? Here's what they think and what they say and what occurs. But of course, when we're talking about these issues and thinking about these issues, there are much broader and more general issues at stake. And philosophy typically tends to be interested in those broad, general, abstract issues. So while we might look, say, at particular versions of these uh, topics, you know, genetic enhancement, or if machines can think, or if reality is the way it appears, there are all sorts of different ways those topics could be uh, made concrete into a particular situation. And quite honestly, with the topics we're looking at and, and the films we're looking at, um, when I was saying I had material to do this course multiple times, even for the topics we're doing, often I would, uh, you know, for some of these topics, I have several other films sort of set aside, which I had half thought about including in the course, but I'm, you know, for one reason or another, uh, settled on the, the ones that we have here. Uh, often you get essentially the same abstract or general topic being represented in some sort of popular medium, film, like the literature and so on, multiple times, right? You get that same issue that's somehow in the background or part of the setting, or it even might be very central and, and salient in the thing, but ultimately it's the same underlying issue. And as philosophers, broadly speaking, we are very interested in those general underlying issues, right? those topics as a whole, not just in their particular forms. Though in this course, we're gonna be interested in their, their particular concrete instantiations as well. So what are we trying to do in the course? Well, look, in the, the course, um, in terms of objectives, what are we going for? Well, we're gonna start by learning the basics of philosophical argumentation. So a little bit of a, a primer on philosophical arguments. If you've done, say, Philosophy 1000 with me or another instructor, or you've done say Logic 1000, the critical thinking course, some of the, the basics might seem pretty obvious. It might be retreading very familiar ground. If you haven't done any philosophy before, uh, taking some time during this first week to really review that content, think about it, try to master it, will be very important for your overall success in this course. Um, after we do that, so that's really the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna examine a number of influential views on the topics we cover, all right? So um, both in terms of films 
and in terms of the readings. Lastly, uh, our last objection is to analyze and evaluate the views we examine. Here again, both in the films and in the writings. Now, what, um, what are the, the learning outcomes, right? So those are the course objectives. That's what the course is trying to do. That's, that's where we're trying to go. What am I hoping you're going to get out of this, right? What, what are you going to take away from the course? Well, become familiar with the arguments and the views of the philosophers we examine. So by the end of the course, you're going to be able to, you know, on, on one of the topics list, to be able to say, oh, yeah, well, uh, there's a philosopher named so-and-so, and, and here's sort of what they thought and how that relates to that issue. And here are some interesting points that come up from there. Read and understood difficult text philosophy can be hard to work through, and I'm going to be providing uh, explanations, lectures to try to assist with that, try to make the material more clear. But philosophy can be very dense. It can be difficult to read. It's not like picking up a, a novel or something like that. So read and understand difficult text and critically analyze film contents. So here again, thinking about the course, um, doing film, I, I think, is, is lovely, right? Uh, almost anybody watches films, right? Or, or I suppose I should rephrase that. Almost everybody watches films or movies. I'm, I'm not too caught up on the distinction between film and movie. I can invoke it, and I might invoke it from time to time. Uh, but, right, we, uh, uh, just as, as people living in the 21st century, it's a very prominent part of our, our experience, of our uh, access to the world, the way we think about things, how information gets presented to us, our entertainment, right? Film does a lot of different things for us. It's, it's a very important part of our culture, whatever that is. Notions of culture, I think, are, are fuzzy and, and difficult and present a lot of interesting problems. So I'm just going to say something like 21st century culture. Whatever that is, right? uh, the films in this course aren't here just purely for entertainment. So, in taking this course and watching the films, I do hope you get some entertainment out of the course in general, right? I don't think fun and learning are somehow at loggerheads and, and can't come together. In fact, I hope you have a lot of fun during this course. I want to have a lot of fun during this course. Part of the reason I became an academic is because I think it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of fun to be had, right? I think learning certainly can be fun. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. And not only do I hope that you uh, learn some things in this course, you know, when you come to this course, like I said, um, you should be able to sort of come out and, and know what some philosophers said in some of these interesting topics. Um, but am I expecting, you know, in, in 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, you're still going to have, you know, locked in your memory banks. Oh, yeah, I remember what so-and-so said about what. Maybe, maybe not. I, I did my undergrad a few years ago. It uh, keeps getting further back in time. I've forgotten a fair bit of what I learned there. Not all, certainly. Uh, and some of it gets jogged as I present myself to old information again. Oh, right, yeah. Um, but really, the, the important part of what you're going to be doing in the, this course is really developing some skills. And so some of those skills are, you know, reading comprehension, right? Reading and understanding difficult texts, that's a valuable skill to have. Being able to critically analyze film contents, take something that is designed in a lot of ways for entertainment, and being able to step back and really put it under the microscope and say, okay, what's really going on here? What, do, what should I take away, right? How is this issue presented? How should I think about that issue? So we're gonna be doing some of that. Uh, you're gonna be critically assessing the texts and arguments we study, um, the films as well, right? You're going to clearly express your views in writing. That's going to be your, your really primary means of expression in this course, through your writing, right? You're going to be writing to your peers on the forums. You're going to be writing this argument assignment. You're going to be writing some essays. So clearly expressing your ideas in writing is important. And that's something we're going to talk more about when we talk about the basics of philosophical argumentation. Critically and respectfully engage with your peers. Um, I'm going to get you arguing with each other. Now, that doesn't mean yelling and shouting and being angry and mean. Uh, in fact, that's not what I want to see at all, right? Respectful and critical engagement. Help develop that capacity, that ability that I know you already have, but we can work on it and try to make it even better to engage with somebody else that you may or may not know, 
and to take up a, a view or a position that might be contrary to theirs, right? To suggest that they might be wrong in something that they've said or expressed, or to suggest that there might be something more to an issue than they seem to be realizing. As well as, of course, and this is something else you can do in the forums and engaging with your peers, uh, working together, right? Being cooperative in argumentation, right? Saying, hey, that's an interesting idea. I see the reason you would believe this. Here's another reason you might believe this. Here's something else to think about in terms of uh, this, this topic, that argument. Right? And then lastly, um, you know, what, what I hope you're going to, um, to take away from the course, the, the learning outcome, formulating your own views on some of these important issues more clearly than before taking the course. So I do hope by the end of the course, as you sort of step away from it, we're all done, you can um, sort of look back and say, well, yeah, I, I think I know something, something more than I did, or, or I've, I've got more arguments, more reasons in mind than I did on some of these issues, like say genetic enhancement or uh, whether or not machines can be conscious and so on. Okay, so what about the text and the course materials? All of the required readings are gonna be free. So you don't have to buy a book for this course. So I've already showed you briefly the Moodle page. Like I said, all the readings will either be there in a PDF form that you can download, or there's gonna be links there to the readings uh, and you'll get them either via the library or um, there may be a, a piece or a few pieces that are located on the internet somehow, uh, but they're all gonna be freely available. So you don't have to pay anything for the readings, right? Uh, and if you've ever had to pay $200 for a textbook, I bet that's music to your ears. Now, in addition to the readings, you're going to have to watch at least some of the films in the course. I suggest watching all of them. I'm gonna be talking one way or another about all of them. Uh, the cost, course material cost for the course is really getting access to those films and, and watching them. Now, I don't care how you do that. Do it legally. Um, but you can you can buy those films if you already own them. Great, just watch your copy if you've already seen the films as well. well great, great. You can rewatch them, right? If you've never seen them, good opportunity to you know watch some movies and say I'm doing homework right now. Um, so you have to get access to the films. You can buy them, right? And I don't care if they're used or new or whatever. You can rent them, uh, right? And you can rent them digitally. You can rent them online. Um, you can stream them. Uh, quite a few of these films, in fact, I, I believe most of them, um, I, I'm not gonna guarantee that, but I believe most of them are available for streaming on Netflix. So if you have a Netflix subscription, um, that will get you access to a lot of the course material. This isn't a plug for Netflix. If you have some other streaming service and has the film content, great. I'm, I'm not being paid or reimbursed by Netflix at all here. Um, so you need to get access to the film somehow. And in addition to that, one sort of wrinkle with that, however you get access to them, make sure that you can access at least like the, the time uh, reference in the film. Uh, because I'm going to be asking you when you're using those films and referring to them to refer to specific times in the film. So rather than just saying, oh yeah, in the film, this uh, scene happened or this thing happened, I'm gonna say, okay, Tell me like where, is it like at the 45 minute mark, right? Now you don't necessarily have to be like down to the second, it doesn't have to be super, super precise, but you do need to be able to give me some kind of relatively fine grained distinction about where content is. So you're gonna need, however you access the, the films, you need to be able to, uh, you know, pause it or, or pull up and say, oh yeah, I'm at 46 minutes right now, or, or something like that. Uh, you don't have to, have chapter references. So I know if you stream something, say on Netflix, uh, versus, you know, if you buy it, if you have the disc, typically the disc is broken into chapters or, or scenes that, you know, they may or may not be named or numbered, and you can sort of flip through them and they themselves last a certain amount of time. You don't have to have that. Um, the time reference is, is sufficient. In fact, I asked specifically for time references when you're referring to the films precisely because that opens the door to um, being able to simply stream them or access them in multiple different sorts of ways without necessarily having to buy them. So that's your one cost for the course, accessing the films. Um, and, and I suppose paying your tuition and having an internet connection, um, which are not negligible costs, but um, those are in some sense 
basic costs that seem to always be there no matter what course you're taking. As I said, uh, this course uses Moodle, so make sure you have Moodle access. I also have a YouTube page. That's where I'm going to be posting videos. Okay, well, you have to know that. If you're watching this video, you've gone to the YouTube page to access this video, which is hosted on YouTube. So wherever you went there, my YouTube page, that's where there's going to be more, more videos. So uh, when we take a look at the schedule, basically um, four days a week, Monday through Thursdays, typically in the afternoon. So you can expect by the end of the workday, Monday through Thursday, I'm going to have posted a new video lecture of some sort. And then there's some due dates, which we're getting down to um, quite quickly here. You can see them on the page. Um, so I'm gonna be posting content to that YouTube page. So accessing that as well is something you're gonna to have to be able to do for the course. You don't need a, a YouTube account or anything like that. I'm, I'm not gonna be tracking your viewing of the lectures. So you don't need any kind of account or special thing there. If you can just access YouTube videos and watch them, that's um, a, a requirement for the course. If you are uh, um, anticipate having problems with that, you know, say you, you don't have access to high-speed connection or, or something like this, uh, or you sort of look at the schedule in this course and you say, I'm, I'm not sure I can make that work, particularly because of something to do with the videos, contact me. Send me an email, stop by my office hours, come and talk to me. We'll see if we can work something else out. Uh, I, I really like this course to be accessible for everybody. If, um, if we can figure something out, that's great. If not, we'll do some hard thinking about ways that we might be able to make this course work for you. Uh, this clause here, uh, just a respect clause, right? You're gonna have to argue with people, you're gonna have to engage with people, you're gonna have to share reasons. By staying in this course, you tacitly agree to respect others even if you disagree with their views. I am not looking for uniformity of opinion in this course. In fact, it'd be kind of boring if we went through the course and everybody had exactly the same ideas on every topic and nobody ever disagreed with anybody. That would not only be boring, but very unusual. Um, we're dealing with topics that often people have different views about. That's part of what makes them interesting philosophical topics. Um, it is quite fine to argue with each other, disagree with each other, and exchange reasons with each other, but no insults, right? Uh, and, and look, I think I'm just going to stop talking about this now. You know this, right? Um, I'm putting it in here in part because right in the forum instructions as well, there's, there's a respect component in there. Um, I don't think this really needs much elaboration. Keep your focus on the arguments. Don't drag the people into it, right? Don't say, oh, you're an idiot because you think this and here's why you're wrong. Just stick to the, you think this, but I'm, I think that's wrong and here's why right? We don't need the extra part. We don't need that inference from what somebody has said or, or what they've put forward as a, an argument. Uh, two conclusions about them as people. And in fact, one thing I've, I've learned in dealing with at this point, probably at least a few thousand students, uh, is to be pretty, pretty slow to make inferences from what somebody has said or even say done as a piece of work to who they are, what they're capable of right? Um, we all, myself included, make mistakes, say things we don't really mean, you know, we, we don't express ourselves perfectly clearly at all times. We change our minds about things. Um, and really disrespecting people and moving quickly from something they've, they've said or, or somehow expressed to making judgments about who they are entirely or, um, you know, trying to put them in some kind of box, uh, not only often is, is sort of sloppy and probably a little too hasty, uh, but often then just acts as a barrier to actually communicating and engaging with someone, um, which assuming you wanna make them better people, uh, if you wanna make their beliefs truer, you want them to you know, come to see things the way you see them because you, are, you think you're right, uh, generally speaking, disrespecting people doesn't uh, allow for that. It's not conducive to that kind of change. Okay, so what do you have to do in the course? Well, I've already mentioned it. So there's a participation component that's done through the forums on Moodle. Those are done weekly. So there's a due date on Fridays and then a due date on the following Mondays. I'm gonna talk more about all of the assessments here in a separate video, like I said, later this week. Um, so I'm just gonna give you the very short version right now. So 
Um, and there are instructions for all of these already posted on Moodle. So if you just can't wait for the, the video explanation of them, go read the instructions. And even once you watch the video explanation of them, go read the instructions, right? Better to, to get it twice um, than to not get it at all or only sort of get it one way. So there's a participation grade that's 15% of your final grade that's uh, done weeklies. On Fridays, you have to make an initial post. So really, you've, you've got to put some thought into what you want to say. Um, you make an initial post, and I'm going to be grading the initial post. And then by the end of the following Monday, so you've got sort of the weekend, but it's, it's by like Monday just before midnight sort of thing. Well, not sort of thing. Monday just before midnight. It's 11.59. So by the end of Monday, you have to respond to a couple of your peers. So you have to look at what they posted. And then, like I already mentioned, you can be cooperative. You can try to add a reason why they're right. You can um, try to show them why they're wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So the participation, 15%. You get one sort of free week. So I'm just gonna drop the lowest grade out of the, there's six weeks that we're going to be doing this in the course. Um, if you do all six weeks, I'll drop the lowest grade. If you only do five weeks, I'll take all five weeks and they count equally at 3% per week. There's an argument assignment due July 14th. This is the, the first written assignment I want you to do. Um, there's a sample assignment there. Really, this is a practice assignment on formulating arguments. So we're gonna look at that introduction to argumentation material this week. This argument assignment makes you draw on that and put together an argument, put some of that um, uh, material, some of that thinking into practice. You're going to get a little bit of early feedback on me. It's a nice low stakes assignment. It's not worth very much. It also won't take very long to do. So if you're looking at that saying, oh, July 14th, oh, I'm very busy. It's not a, a very taxing assignment. After that, the far more taxing assignments are going to be the essays. So in the course, you're going to have to do two of these, and they're going to be at 40% each of the final grade, so that makes up 80%. Now, uh, and, and the essays are going to be on the various topics through the course. You get to pick what you want to write on, so there's quite a bit of um, choice in the course in terms of, you know, what films and readings do you want to engage with? What do you want to write on? Um, the, the forums are going to force you to engage with a fair bit of material, but even there you get to choose. You don't have to engage with everything in a given week. But then when it comes to the essays, you can pick two topics you really like and write on those. You can also do more than just two essays and I'll take your best two grades. Now, I'm not letting you revise and resubmit. So if you do an essay and you get a grade you don't really like, you can change that by writing a whole new paper on a whole separate topic, right? And in fact, I will let you do, because there's five different due dates, you can do all five essays in this course, and I'll take the grades from your best two. Now, my advice would be to, um, you know, focus, put in a real effort. I, I think it's not worth your time to put in sort of half an effort and do all five. It'd be far better to put in a full effort and do not all of them, but you're welcome to do all of them if you want. Um, and in fact, if you want to do really well in this course, um, be prepared to do more than, than two papers, because really it's on those essays that you're going to get my, my feedback. Um, and of course, you can talk to me ahead of time as well, but with the summer schedule, you know, the, the time frame is pretty crunched. Things move by pretty quickly, but you're going to be getting my feedback on the papers, which should, right, assuming it's good feedback, be informative and tell you how to do better next time, right? It'll tell you, here's what you did really well. Here are the areas that require improvement and the areas that if you had put more work into would have resulted in better grade. So the essay stakes are pretty high, right? 40% each, it's quite a bit, 80% of the final course grade. That might be scary, but keep in mind, you've got five chances to get two grades you want. So sure, the stakes are high. I'm going to demand quite a bit out of you, right? But the goals I set are achievable, right? You can get an A plus in the course, it's difficult. It's Right? Don't get me wrong, that is reserved for exceptional work, really, really strong, um, almost flawless. Right? It's achievable, but I'm also demanding. So be prepared to do more than just two essays if you want to uh, achieve a really strong grade, uh, particularly if you, know, you think your writing isn't uh, um, particularly strong, you really want to improve on it. This might be a very good course to stay in. It would be a challenge, I'll tell you that, you know, up front, uh, I'm, I'm not sort of pushover, I'm not 
very easy in terms of grading, but there's a lot of opportunity to develop your skills here. So uh, I'm not gonna read through these little explanations, but I basically just told you most of what's here. Like I said, there's more instructions on our course website, so go there. Uh, I've already mentioned this, you'll need uh, a Turnitin account. So for the, the argument assignment and the essays, those are gonna get submitted to Turnitin. I don't have it set up through Moodle, in part because I don't like how it functions, but you can use this course ID right here and this enrollment key, movies, uh, to enroll in our course. Do that early. Having troubles registering in the course is not gonna constitute a legitimate reason to hand something in late. So try to do that this week. Before anything's due, try to go enroll in the course on Turnitin. If you have problems, contact me, we can sort it in. Uh, late policy here. So uh, on the argument assignment and the essays, you could submit them up to 120 hours late, that's, that's five days. For the first 48 hours, that written work is late, uh, there's no grade penalty, I'm not gonna take points off it, but you're gonna receive minimal comments. So I'm not, the, the, the penalty is that I'm not gonna give you as much of my time. Instead of going through and sort of pointing things out in the text and, and marking them up, all you're gonna get, maybe, and I'm not even gonna promise this, uh, you'll get a rubric score at the end, you'll get your final grade, and then some kind of overall comment about the paper. That's sort of what was, what was done really well, what requires improvement. But I'm not gonna sort of take the time to mark it up and go through it. If the paper's on time, I'll go through and mark it up, plus give the rubric score and the final grade and the, the comments at the end. So you get more detailed feedback that's on time. And then beyond 48 hours late, uh, there's a 4% stacking penalty on top of the, the minimal to no comments. So up to uh, what, 12% if you know, you're sort of four to, to five days late, 96 to 120 hours, with 12% penalty plus fewer comments. If you uh, have something you're trying to submit beyond 120 hours late, so beyond five days late, you must uh, contact me and tell me why I should still accept it. Give me some kind of adequate reason, right? What prevented you from doing that? If you just sort of quietly stick it in the turn it in folder, I'm, I'm not going to reach out to you. It's up to you to contact me and tell me what's going on and why you couldn't have it done ahead of time. If you have issues getting your work done in this course and you have um, a, an adequate or legitimate reason, which I outline here, is an unforeseen, exceptional or extenuating circumstance which merits special consideration and could not have reasonably been planned around ahead of time, right? What does this involve? Um, unforeseen medical issues, right? Or, or even in some sense, um, potentially foreseen, right? If you have some kind of scheduled important event that just cannot be worked around um, in terms of, right, it, it's just not possible that you could have the course content covered by me, you couldn't have access to lectures and so on, work on it ahead of time and, and, and this sort of thing. Or it's something that comes up last minute, right, it's a surprise, you don't realize it's gonna happen. Um, if you're in a situation like that, right, it's, it's a medical issue, um, family care, right, whether it's childcare or, or something else. Um, it could be all sorts of things, really, right? Sick pet, right? And I'm being serious. Um, if something comes up and really gets in your way to, of doing your work, contact me. The worst thing I can do is say, no, that doesn't count as a, an adequate reason. Um, sorry, no extension. But if you do contact me, you tell me what's going on, I, um, there is some flexibility here in terms of, of the due dates and so on. So if you've got some kind of good, good reason, right, some kind of adequate, legitimate reason, something you couldn't see, uh, foresee coming, contact me, right? talk to me. Um, I might ask for documentation, but maybe not, it really all depends. Now the forums um, are, are very time sensitive. These are really engagements you have to do with each other. And so those, the, the late policy of up to five days late does not apply to the forums, right? You can't five days late make your initial post to the forum. That's not gonna work. So effectively, there's no standing late policy for the forum. You either do it on time or you didn't do it on time. Uh, but in light of the fact that life happens, if there is something that comes up, if you're having trouble meeting those due dates, contact me again. We might be able to work something out. Um, 
you know, some kind of minor extension in terms of the deadline or, or something like that, again, contact me if you're having issues successfully completing the course. Uh, but the, the standing late policy doesn't apply to the forum posts. Uh, so quickly, the last few bits here, email policy, email me whenever you want. I don't have notifications and whatever set up. You know, people often email me, well, okay, not often, but sometimes you email me in the middle of the night, you know, two in the morning or something, and then they apologize. They're, oh, I'm sorry for emailing you at 2 a.m. I don't care. I don't care if you email me at 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 a.m. I, my phone's off, right? My email's off. I don't have things that ding and, and want my attention. I, I get rid of that. That's gone. That's not part of my life. I check my email when I check my email. I will check it every day during the work week, right? I'll check it Monday through Friday uh, consistently, often multiple times per day. So if you email me during the week, you can um, expect to get a response within 24 hours. Um, weekend, hit or miss. I might check it, I might not. Depends what I'm up to. And, and so one exception there, if you email me sort of at the tail end of Friday, say, um, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm sort of finishing out some work and so on, I may or may not check, you know, if you email me at 4.30 Friday afternoon, uh, I might not get back to you until the following Monday. But I check my email at least once a day, Monday through Friday. I may or may not check it on the weekend. Email me whenever you want. That is the best way to get a hold. That and, and office hours. Active, oh, also check your own email. That's how I'm gonna get a hold of you when I've got things to tell you. In fact, I'll probably be emailing you once a day with sort of an update on what's going on in the course. Um, also use your institutional account, your University of Lethbridge account. Why? I don't have a standing policy to, you know, I automatically delete other emails or something. I don't do that. But there's two things, one, um, sometimes emails from other accounts don't show up. Sometimes the institutional filters get rid of those. And I've had that happen. Students send me an email, I never reply, and then they ask me sometime later, oh, did you get my email about the extension or whatever? And I, no, what, what are you talking about? I don't know. I've never had that happen with an email that's coming from a University of Lethbridge account, right? When it's coming to my University of Lethbridge account. So use your institutional email. If you, uh, the second point, if you don't use your institutional email, use a Gmail or something, uh, there are confidentiality issues there, right? Somebody could make an email account, a Gmail or whatever, that looks like it's you, right? They could use your name or something and claim to be you. Uh, so when I see those sorts of emails, something that isn't your institutional account, there, I can discuss some things. If you just ask me a, a course question or something, I can respond to that. But if it's anything more than that, you know, you're talking about a grade or you're trying to do anything that I need to know it's you on the other end, um, then I can't give you the information you want. I'm just gonna have to tell you to email me from your other account anyways. So use your ULF account. Um, active learning, what does this mean? It really means pay attention, right? Um, read all the course documents, right? Read the syllabus, read the schedule, read the assignment instructions, do the readings, watch the films, Watch the lectures, participate in the forums, be proactive in your communication with me, right? If you um, want to talk about an upcoming essay, try to get a hold of me ahead of time. Or if you send me an email, hey, can we chat in 10 minutes? I often go hours without checking my email over the course of the day because I'm working on things, I'm, I'm focused, right? So be proactive. If you want to chat with me outside of office hours, try to set it up at least a day ahead of time, preferably even more. Uh, which is not to say you have to, right? I'm just saying, uh, you know, be proactive, right? Schedule yourself. Try to schedule your times with me. I'm telling you right now, I, my phone doesn't go off and, and ding when I get an email, right? There is no way to instantly get a hold of me. Right? It's going to take a little bit of time. So think ahead, right? I am happy to talk to you. I'm not trying to intentionally sort of uh, pull myself away and then put barriers between us. But for my own work, right, my, my own productivity, my own focus, I don't have things that go off like that. Right? I, I get lost in what I do. I sort of disappear for hours in, in thinking in the films and, and making lectures and grading and so on. So be proactive, plan ahead, think about it. I'm very happy to talk to you, um, but I don't want you to get sort of caught by, by that. Um, and if anything is unclear, right, expectations, instructions, um, 
something I said in a, a lecture or a video or whatever, an email. Ask questions. As I've already admitted, we're all imperfect, myself included. There are times where I think I express myself clearly and I don't. Right? Uh, and, and often I only see that when somebody else points it out to me. We're better when we work together. Now, I try to make everything as clear as I can. That's really my mission as, uh, at least part of my mission as your instructor here. Um, I try to make everything as clear as possible, but if it's not, really, the, the onus is on you, right? Reach out. And it's not insulting. It's not problematic. I'm not going to react poorly if you reach out and say, look, you said this here, right? I, I read the instructions. You say this here, but in another spot, you say something different. Or I know you say this here, but I'm not sure what that means. Right? By all means, do that. Um, do look at everything first. Read the instructions. Look at the videos. Right? Um, if you send me an email and, and the answer to your question is contained in those documents already, I'm probably just going to refer you back to the documents. OK, uh, academic integrity. Um, this, this is a long spot here. I want to talk more about this as we're looking at um, the assignments and so on anyway, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. The really relevant part for us uh, is this clause about plagiarism, right? Really, if you represent the words or ideas of other people as your own, that's plagiarism, and it's bad, and bad things will happen to you if you plagiarize. What does that mean? It means you need to properly quote and cite the, the texts and films you use. Give credit where credit is due. That's really what that means. We're going to talk more about that in a future video. Here again, if you have any questions about what plagiarism is, about how to avoid it, um, about any of that, talk to me, right? And go read the, the policy on um, uh, academic offenses, right? Uh, as well as the, the one on non-academic offenses. You're governed by these. They're only a few pages long. Go read them. Here's the grade conversion scale. So typically in the course, you're going to be getting a percentage grade for me. Here's what that means in terms of the letter grades. If you take a look at that scale and compare it to other courses, you might look and say, oh, that's, that's pretty high. You know, an A plus, that seems very demanding, 97 to 100%. Uh, in a way, it is very demanding, yes. But particularly for the essays, which make up the bulk of the grade in this course, I really, as I grade them, grade them qualitatively. As I'm going through, I'm, I'm thinking about how well various components of the the paper are done, uh, and that comes together and, and creates a grade. And in fact, I'll talk a little bit more about how that, that fits together when we're talking about the assignments. Uh, but you know, when I go through, really, I'm thinking in terms of you know, this is this is an A paper, this is a strong A, or this is an A plus paper. Well, this is a B minus paper because of, of these reasons. Um, that percentage scale could be different, right? Look, um, if and if you've taken a different course with me, in fact, that percentage scale might be different. You know, a B minus might be 70 to 72 in a course. If you write a paper that is a B minus quality, and again, I'll talk more about what exactly constitutes that later, um, that means I give it an 80 to 82 in this course. If we're in a course where a 70 to 72 would be a B minus, then for that same paper, that same quality of work, you'd be getting a, a number 10% low, right? So the numbers are in a lot of ways secondary in this course to the quality of the work that's being produced. So if you look at the numbers, um, they're in some sense uh, a, a, a consideration after the fact. So don't get scared off by that number uh, letter percentage conversion. Uh, last couple of notes, uh, if you've got any accommodations, go through the ALC. So they're, they're still closed because of course the campus is shut down, but you can uh, email them. Uh, and then if there's any accommodations that are relevant to the course, um, please contact me about them. They should contact me as well, uh, particularly if you've got any issues with, say, video lectures or uh, with, with the writing. There aren't any tests in this course, so if there are any accommodations concerning tests, they just don't matter. Um, but you can still tell me about them, but they're, they're not going to be relevant for our purposes. And then as a final note, if um, there's something unforeseen that happens in the, the uh, you know, course or, or the world, uh, Things might change in the course. I have no plans on them being any different than everything I've told you. Um, if there are any major changes, I'll communicate what they are, try to give a reasonable amount of time for feedback and so on. But 
that's just in there as a, a final note, right? If something unusual happens, um, there could be changes to the course, but I don't plan on there being any, and I don't want there to be any, quite frankly. All right, now I'm already going much longer than I anticipated, so let's just take a quick look at the schedule. Like I said, uh, the schedule is your really one-stop spot for what's going to be happening happening in the course on what kind of day. Um, this also tells you on that Moodle page, so the Moodle page is organized much the same way, really tells you how to work through it. So you'll see uh, here on the schedule, so we've got the dates, um, you know, what, what are the readings and or films, like what's the course content, what assessments, if any, are due and when. So this is, the, this is what we're doing right now, video introduction to the course, right? July 6th, I'm, I'm talking about what the course is going to be like. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk more about the assignments. So I'm going to talk about the, the forums, the essays. I'll also talk about the argument assignment, though we're going to talk about that quite a bit more as we do the rest of the content later this week, um, because that argument assignment really builds on uh, these two pieces here. So tomorrow, I'm just going to be talking more about the assignments in the course, getting this more detail about that, what they're like, what you have to do in them, what you have to do um, to succeed, and so on. The day after that, so Wednesday this week, I'm going to have a video on, on what is philosophy, right? Just what is the subject matter you are now studying if you've never done it before? Many of my students uh, in, in a summer course like this one haven't done any philosophy at all, right? Not as a course. So I'm going to talk some about what philosophy is, uh, at least my interpretation of it. And then on Thursday, I'm going to go through this introduction to philosophical argumentation and the use of language. All right. uh, and, and really, those are what feed into the argument assignment and the skills that you should be developing on that argument assignment and by going through this content are the skills that you're going to need to succeed in both the forums and in the essays. Now, as I mentioned, there are those weekly forums. They start this week. So this Friday, there's going to be a forum. Um, there are more detailed forum instructions online. I'm going to be talking more about forums tomorrow. The forum this week is, don't tell anybody, it's an easy one. Um, the forum this week is an introduction forum. It's a, it's a kind of meet and greet. It's to get you used to how to post in the forums, how to use them in Moodle if you haven't done that before. Also to get you connecting to some other people in the course. To get you doing some of the things you need to do for the, the more difficult forums, the ones where you've got to be posting content, responding to films and movies. Um, so by this Friday, you're going to have to take quite honestly, a few minutes to write up something brief, a little introduction about yourself. There's gonna be a few questions I stick on our, our Moodle site um, for you to answer. Nothing horribly personal, but just things like, have you done philosophy before, right? Have you done a distance online course like this before? Um, a few things like that. And then by Monday, by the end of next Monday, you'll have to have responded to a couple of other people, much like you're gonna to have to do going forward week to week. Starting next week, we are going to be getting into our first topic. So the argument assignment is due next week, July 14th, Tuesday. After that, I'm just looking at the, the assignment section now. Um, Thursday nights is, are when the essays are due. And they are on topics from the previous week. So July 23rd, there's an essay due. And that essay can be on something from week two. So the this, this skepticism issue, right? Moving down, the second essay due Thursday, July 30th, that could be on the value and reality issue. So there's a bit of a time lag in the course. And then at the, the end of the course, basically the very last essay, so there's no final exam, but there's a final essay in lieu of the final exam. And of course, given that you get to pick which essays you wanna do, and in some sense you get to pick if you wanna do that final essay, um, that very last one uh, is going to really encompass um, it up to and including the very last day of class, which turns out to be the Monday. Okay, so just going back up, um, our first issue that we're going to look at next week, are, you know, are we in a dream or a computer simulation? Is the world the way it appears to us? You know, in our everyday sensory experience, we walk around, we think there's a whole bunch of physical objects around us. Uh, we think the world is basically the way it seems. But some films, you know, famously, the Matrix back from uh, 1999, more recently Inception, I think has done this very well, 
many other films as well uh, and pieces of literature, but these are the two I, I've decided to pick because they fit well with this topic and the next topic. Um, both of those films speak to that, this issue in their own way. All right? Now we've got three readings about this. Um, so Descartes, this is a 17th century version of this kind of skeptical inquiry. Um, Bostrom's Are We Living in Computer Simulation, much more recent. Uh, it's, it's a different take. This ties into the matrix more than Inception. But here again, um, like I said, in some ways you get to pick what you want to do in this course. And so there's some different pieces and they fit together in different ways. And, and you get to pick which pieces you want to engage with and how you want to put them together. Uh, though I'm going to be talking about how they often fit together, most easily fit together, but you still certainly have some agency in this course to do things that I don't expect. Uh, so we've got next week, just take a look at this. Uh, if you take a look at the dates, on Monday next week, so a week today, July 13th, my lecture that day, I'm going to be talking about these two films and about some of the different scenes in them, um, how these topics get brought up in those two films, so if you know if you don't like spoilers, and I don't, um, watch the films before you watch the video lectures, because I'm going to assume you've seen the whole thing at that point. I'm just going to give it all away. Right? So uh, some weeks I'm going to do that. I'm going to be talking specifically about the the films. That's going to be one of the days worth of lecture content. Um, and so next week on Monday I'm going to be talking about the two films, how this issue comes up, and then on Tuesday we'll talk about Descartes. Uh, Wednesday we'll talk about Bostrom, Thursday we'll talk about Hazlitt, and then I don't post lecture content Fridays, in part because the uh, forums that you have to do every week, which I I've only indicated on the first week, but they show up every week, um, uh, um, are it, the, the forums starting in week two are on the content from that week. So your forum post on July 17th, is going to be about something from that week. So you can talk about The Matrix, Inception, Descartes, Bostrom, Hazlitt. You don't have to talk about all of it. In fact, you shouldn't. You have to bring together at least a couple of pieces and, and say something you know, interesting and argumentative about. Our second topic is about value and reality. Does something have to be real to be valuable? This comes up in both Inception and The Matrix, as well as, more recently, Ready Player One. So on that Monday, I'm going to talk about Inception and The Matrix um, from this different perspective, this different topic, right? What's, what's really relevant and, and important in the films for that? And then also talking about Ready Player One. So there's one more film added for that week. We then have, uh, on Tuesday that week, we have two short pieces of reading. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, we have two sort of uh, more normal length pieces of reading. After that, we're gonna take week four, I'll tell you this right now, week four is, is a busy week. Um, it's probably our busiest week here again, because you get to pick what you want to engage with, though, I don't feel too bad about it being a very busy week. Um, because we've got three films, four readings, and, and so for the films, um, and this is also just a function of how these films and topics fit together. Um, for the, the first topic is really, um, should torture be used? as a means of gleaning information from, say, terrorist suspects. Uh, under what sorts of conditions might that be justified or not? So there are two films that speak to this issue, each in their own way. They uh, draw attention to different things. There are two readings that talk about it. The readings are of a manageable length. And I, I think given the content in those readings uh, and, and the way these uh, issues are presented in the films, on that week, it makes a lot of sense to simply talk about the readings and then talk about how they uh, attach to or connect with different parts of these two different fil films, so Unthinkable and Zero Dark Thirty. And then we've got uh, The Ethics of Global Wealth Distribution with Elysium, film from 2013, and a couple of readings there. Um, so here again, you get to, in some sense, pick, you know, you don't have to necessarily watch all three of those films that week and do all four of those readings. You might say, I'm more interested in one topic than the other. Or I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm potentially interested in both. Maybe you watch all the films and you say, you know, I think I've decided I'm more interested in one topic than the other. And then you can really focus your attention to that. Or you can watch all the video lectures and then decide what it is you want to engage with. So you, you do get some real agency here. There's, there's some choice. And because there's nothing like a final exam, um, there's not a, a demand that you absolutely 
um, you know, get through every little bit of the course material, right? Now, I encourage you, in fact, I expect that you're going to be going through all of the course material one way or another. But if you go through, say, the, the torture part, and you say, you know what, I just, I'm not feeling this. This is not something I want to be thinking about right now. Okay, that's, that's fine. Focus on the other topic then. And in fact, in that week, there's those two different topics. You're going to be forced to sort of pick one for engaging with the four imposed for writing an essay. Then there's uh, the genetic enhancement week. Now we've got um, holiday there, the August long weekend. I'm not going to post anything on Monday. We're going to take the long weekend. And then we've got Elysium pops up again because genetic enhancements in there. Also Gattaca, a bit of an older film, 97, uh, but like so perfect for the topic. And we've got two pieces on that. So one day to talk about the films, a uh, day each for the pieces. And then Can Machines Think, uh, Chappie, 2015 film. Uh, and then here again, no day just on Chappie, but rather we'll spend a day each on a couple of different pieces. And I'll talk about the film um, along with them. And then personal identity as our final topic. Here again, we've got Chappie. And then we've also got Moon from uh, 2009. Very interesting film in a lot of ways. And then that personal identity topic is going to spill over into the very last week because we have one class on the final Monday. Um, so there I will take some time to talk about both Chappie and then Moon because there's some interesting and different things that happen between uh, the two films. And again, there's so many other films, you know, probably dozens, easily dozens, uh, where something fairly similar happens to at least what happened with Chappie. Uh, and then Moon complicates things. It makes, makes it more difficult, really challenges our, our intuitions, I think. So we'll have one reading uh, in, on August 13th, and then one more reading on August 17th, our final day. And like I said, there's that final uh, essay due that, that very last week, uh, which encompasses the, the personal identity topic as well. Um, but you can take a look at the essay instructions to see all the various deadlines and the potential topics you can cover um, on those deadlines. Okay. So that takes us through the schedule of the syllabus, uh, gives you a sense of the course website, uh, some sense of what to expect for the course overall. Tomorrow I'll be back with another video talking about the, the nuts and bolts of the various assignments, um, how to go about doing them, you know, with the, the forum and so on, uh, talking about the argument assignment to some degree, talking about the essays, what's going into them. And then later in this week, when we're talking about philosophy and philosophical argumentation, really that's going to give you an even better sense of what I really want you doing in the forums and the, the essay and the argument assignment. Um, what, you know, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, philosophers argue. Uh, it's, it's quite another thing to get into it and say, okay, and here's what that looks like. And, and here are the different pieces of it. Here's, here's a good way to think about it. Here's a way to approach the course content and what we're gonna be doing in it. All right, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I hope to meet some of you soon. I already know quite a few people in the course, which is always lovely. Uh, for those of you I haven't met yet, hello, greetings. Um, please feel free to reach out, send me an email, come drop by my office hours, talk to me, what, whatever you might want. Uh, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Uh, and, and you can expect Mondays through Thursdays, Typically in the afternoons is when I'm going to be posting content because really I'm going to be largely making the content on the days I've got listed there. Um, by the end of the workday, by five o'clock, um, there will be a, a new lecture, a new video, something like that posted. And I will try to keep those videos um, particularly starting next week. So this week I might be a little indulgent, it might get a little long, but I'm really trying to give you a good sense of what the course involves and, and what to do in it. Uh, starting next week, I, I will try, no absolute guarantee, but I want to try to keep the videos each day to something like an hour, right? about an hour's worth of content. It's not an absolute guarantee. It's not going to be exactly an hour, right? Maybe it'll be 50 minutes. Maybe it'll be an hour 10. I'll try to avoid anything that, that stretches on to say 90 minutes. Um, depending on how much I have to say about the, the videos or, or the, the films, um, the videos on those days might even be a little bit shorter. But then, of course, you've got the films to go watch in addition to the course readings. And so I'm trying to keep in mind uh, how much I'm asking you to do overall in this course in terms of a time commitment and try to keep it manageable, try to keep it uh, ab about the same, whatever that is or that means, to uh, another course. You know, if we weren't doing films and you didn't have that to go watch and, and all that extra time to put in, um, how much more would I be 
wanting you to do or expecting you to do in terms of time spent on, say, lectures and readings and so on. So I'm trying to keep that fairly balanced. Okay, I'll go ahead and actually stop this now. Uh, I hope this has been informative and potentially even interesting. Who knows? I'll be back tomorrow talking more about the assignments. Until then, have a great day and welcome to Phil 2000 OLB.